the environment in which a species lives exerts selective pressure on the individuals of that species. So before we consider the population of butterflies shown in the graph, which we call the test species, let's consider the environment in which this population lives. The environment includes predators, such as birds, to which individuals of this species are tasty. In this example, the environment also includes other butterfly species. One individual from each of three species is shown here. These three butterfly species are unpalatable to birds. After capturing and tasting them, birds learn to avoid eating them. The butterflies in our test population are considered Batesian mimics because these edible individuals are similar to, that is, they mimic the appearance of unpalatable species, the models in the environment. The mimics gain protection from predation. Birds that learn to avoid the models also avoid the mimics of similar appearance. However, when birds eat mimic individuals which are tasty, they have more trouble learning which butterflies to eat and which to avoid. Using this concept of Batesian mimicry, we can now explore several types of natural selection. Depending on the abundance of the models, the mimics will undergo stabilizing, directional, or disruptive selection. In our first scenario, the model species with intermediate markings is the most abundant in the environment. Birds often encounter butterflies with these markings and learn to avoid eating them. This gives individuals of our test species with intermediate markings an advantage over the other edible individuals. Over the generations, the mimic with the intermediate phenotype will survive and reproduce more. A graph of the population in a future generation will have a higher, narrower peak. This is an example of stabilizing selection. Stabilizing selection reduces variation by reducing the frequencies of the more extreme phenotypes. In another scenario, the distasteful species with the least markings disappears. Predators soon learn that any butterfly with few markings is edible. This phenotype of our edible test species is no longer protected, so individuals with few markings survive and reproduce less well than those more heavily marked. The graph shifts to the right. This is directional selection. In another scenario, the intermediately marked model decreases in abundance. A similar decline occurs in the mimics because predators now only avoid those that are barely marked or highly marked. Therefore, after many generations, the population of mimics is dominated by the more extreme phenotypes, and its graph of frequencies has two peaks. This is disruptive selection.